everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to be chopping we're going to be changing we're going to be kit bashing one really big giant uh let's get into it uh, the strict technomancer that is vincey v let us get to the technique and learn it vincey v style games workshop was nice enough to send me big old king broad here and uh i'm excited to get him together however my giants aren't really standard giants as you'll see here from the pictures going across the screen, my giants are all horrible Frankensteinian sort of monsters that have been twisted, that have been altered, that have been uh, brought back to life through means uh, most dark and foul. And so it's important to me that I get our new king here uh, also in line with the rest of the army. As such, we're going to talk today about how you kitbash when you've got a big giant mini and an open pallet. We are going to make something truly horrible. We're going to throw a lot of kits in. So let's go ahead and uh, destroy a lot of Warhammer stuff to make one giant miniature. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's head over to the desk. All right. Let's start with the kits. King Broad. We're going to get out the Elder Joman's box. <clears throat> a bunch of different Imperial and Renegade Knights. A little Heart of Gur. I don't know how much that will use, but we'll see. The Sacristan Ford Trine is always good for pipes. We've got some Chaos Chariots for wheels and horns. And then we've got old Mega Gargant and Knight Bits. Uh, so out of this massive pile of nonsense, we are going to see what we can actually build. The first steps are still using the instructions because I still have that open. And I'm going to be combining different aspects of King Broad himself. He's still the base. When you're doing a big kit bash, it's important to still have a central base. Like there's something that is still the center, the consistent, uh, you know, large plurality of the miniature. So even though here you see I'm actually assembling right away one of the Imperial Knight's legs, which are ironically the exact same size as the Mega Gargant's legs, like a Mega Gargant leg and a Imperial Knight leg are the exact same size, uh, which is handy. Uh, I'm still like his main body and stuff like that is still all going to be King Broad. So we're doing a lot of changes on top. And that's my first big piece of advice is make sure that you know what the center of your piece is and use that to anchor. Um, you can always cut away. You can always change. But having some instructions, having some baseline, don't think of it like you're just going nuts and doing whatever with just like trying to slam together every bit. Start from a base and then start making changes. All right, so we've got some basic components together here. We got the beginning. We've swapped his back facing leg for the Imperial Knight leg. Ironically, the Mega Gargants and the Imperial Knights have the exact same size legs. So that makes that part uh, just a really easy change. And we just dropped a bunch of sprue goo in there to kind of hold it in place. We can lock it in better later. For now, I just want to let that harden uh, completely and then that'll lock that in place. So while that's doing that, then we got to turn to other places. Now I assembled his torso more or less whole because we can always hack at these things later. And that's one of the things I wanted to flip the camera on here and say is a big part of this is kind of just trying parts and seeing what works and then flipping things around, figuring out like what of your normal pieces do you want to use and what do you want to replace? For example, normally along his arm, he has kind of this hammered together armor piece. I wanted to give him slightly a nicer armor piece, so I took this off of one of the Imperial Knight pieces. Easy peasy. So we can just like, yep, that looks good. Test it on there. Drop some sprue goo on the back of this bad boy. So it's nice and laid on there. And then we just get that onto where it should be. And then we'll let that dry. But at the same time, you know, we can we can test other things like, oh, he's got this big blank chest. Maybe this like armor piece can work. So we can kind of test that around. And eh, do I like it up top? It kind of looks like he's wearing a little too small t-shirt. Maybe flip it the other direction. Uh, you know, maybe that's okay, right? Not sure on that one yet. Got to think about that piece a little more. But if I end up not liking something that I've assembled, there's no reason I can't still cut it away. And that sounds anathema, like, why did you bother to assemble it if you're just going to cut it? But sometimes you need to see the base shape before you start then modifying it. So like right here, yeah, this is fine. I like his arm good enough right there. So we can go ahead and attach that arm um, because I'm going to have this arm holding the big, uh, you know, some big club or uh, a version of it in one hand. So I do want this to like have some strength 
uh, to still look like kind of a normal arm. The interesting part about this particular build that I'm doing is that his other arm has no purpose. Like, it's not actually a weapon on the fig in any way. Uh, his, his big main weapon is held solely in this sort of one hand. And so his other arm is completely effectively useless in the in as far as like determining WYSIWYG or anything like that goes so we're gonna have a lot of freedom over here on this arm to kind of mess it up or do whatever we want or make something that's just visually interesting and monstrous um as we convert this guy so i'm gonna keep messing around with parts uh and we'll go from there so now that we have the center of the torso and the legs assembled it's time to start modifying and <clears throat> my real goal here is to just figure out what interesting pieces can we swip swap around to push toward that ultimate vision of a nightmare giant. And as I'm looking at him and still using some of the pieces and combining them together, I want to really state the importance of futzing here, of just messing around, looking at your bits, staring at stuff, cutting it out, dry fitting it, moving it around, seeing if it fits, determining if it's the right piece, the right theme, and so on. Have a vision, not of what the final model is going to look like. You'll never know that. I didn't know that when I started. But have a vision of the theme, the thing you want to achieve. I know I want to have this big, nightmare, impressive, potent king of the giants, of my Frankensteinian monster giants. And so everything I do and I look at is like, well, can I add more blades, spikes, tubes, just things that make him nightmarish. And a lot of bits I cut and then don't use. That's fine. Experiment and see what happens. So we got the lower body all together. I went ahead and put the back piece on there because that'll give it more stability for it to all dry. That's going to sit for a while. We're coming together on the top part of making him look cruel. I want this guy to look, you know, horrible. And we're going to add lots of spikes and different things that make him look more Frankensteinian as we go. But he can also stand in for King Broad, so I want him to have a crown. I found this little piece on one of the 40k chaos things. But it's funny, when you put it on his head, like that, right? We can kind of get a little crown. Um, kind of a little interesting fan-shaped crown. So I dig that. And that's like, I don't know what that piece is meant to be normally. I have no idea. It doesn't matter what it was meant to be normally. That's what it's going to be now. Uh, at the same time... Things like, we also want to extend that up a little bit. So let's get this bad boy in place uh, and see where we can go. One of the reasons I always work with sprue goo uh, for this is because it will hold the things in place pretty well as I'm sort of initially doing my, my fit. Like I'll dry fit like crazy on this, but it'll still keep it more or less in place. Like I can press it down and it sits there. But at the same time, if I need to readjust, or like you saw me do with the shoulder pads maybe in there, like I can take them back off, because it does take quite a while to set. And so the other thing I want to do here is get these cool horns on him if I can figure out a place to have him. I'm afraid though that the that one of the horns is going to be too big on that side. Let's look at this horn with that, because of the way that his back horns are sticking up. So that causes a problem. Uh, I think we could probably cut it down. So let's do that. Let's cut that horn down. It's a big horn. I might need to get out bigger... bigger clippers. Alright, there we go. Good enough. We got, we got it. We got it progress. Okay, cool. Good enough to just test there. So then, if we kind of ram that maybe up against something like there, that'll work pretty nice. Let's see how that feels. It feels too, like, forward, I think. What if we move this crown around a little bit? Scoot it that way some. Kind of stick it over here on the edge of the crown. And see, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're now we're cooking with gas. I think we're going to take that back off. And what I'm going to actually do is 
just physically squeeze that piece together. There we go. Sometimes we just gotta bend them into place there so it's a tighter fit on his head. There we go. Now it'll actually like kind of snap fit against his head. That feels better. See? Sometimes it's just bending the things until they fit. Cool. Then let's go ahead and cut this horn down to the same size. This is from the Chaos Chariot kit, by the way, in case you're curious. This is the horns off the front of the chariot, because of course their chariots have horns. Great, good stuff there. Okay, so then what we can do is just kind of sit that against there. I like how that feels. So his nice little crown will have two big horns on the side. Put a healthy dollop of our sprue goo on there. Stick that horn against there. There we go. Let's go ahead and shave this a little more flat. So we get a nice flush fit. We can always come in. We're gonna, you know, we'll fix at the end, but it's still better if we're a little more flush for our initial connection joint. Okay. We kind of push that against there. Maybe rotate it down just a little to the side. And there we go. Now he's got a big. Angry Horn Crown. Just like this is that you're constantly testing things you test you dry fit you look you compare don't feel like you've got to go with one initial idea a really great kit bash on a large miniature like this you're trying all sorts of different stuff you don't limit yourself to particular kits anything from big to small in the kits might be valuable terrain kits might be useful you know sci-fi fantasy kits all useful just test them out see what they look like move the pieces around and see how it feels. And then once you get to something good, then you can attach it and go from there. I don't worry generally about whether something fits. We can always come back later with Milliput or green stuff or some sprue goo and clean up gaps or holes or things like that. Let your creativity be your guide and just start going nuts. Right, so here's where we are. I let everything dry for a good whole night. Basically I went away and so everything is now you know, firmly in place, all of our little pokey sticks and doodads and things like that. Um, we've got lots of spikes. I went ahead and attached a crown on the back of his head as well, so he's got kind of a full crown action there, like that. So all that's looking good on the face. I also went ahead and added some tubes, because tubes are always good for monsters, and I attached the lower arm. Inside here this morning, I put on some, some green stuff uh, just to hold that all in place, and we're letting that dry. Uh, we'll put the sort of leg plate on there once everything sets over there. Um, for now, we're going to finish focus on this torso part. Uh, one of the things I want to do is make him extra creepy, and nothing says extra creepy like extra arms. So I found these little bits in one of the Chaos kits, and these look like cool little combinations of muscle and, and pistons and stuff. And I don't know if these are actually the pieces that go with it, but they fit in here. So, because I'm not going to look at the instructions for that thing, because who cares? Uh, instructions don't matter. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Uh, so instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to slap this bad boy up with some, uh, some sprue goo here. Get it ready to go. 
And then we're gonna find a nice place on the side of his torso here where we can go ahead and add an extra shoulder joint, basically. I think something like that probably looks nice. Maybe up a little. Yeah, there we go. Still gives enough clearance for the other arm. Good. And let's goo it up in there. Get our goo going. And we'll go ahead and put a little piece right there. Just drop that bad boy into there. And there we go. I'm going to need to attach that one longer because clearly the joint isn't super strong. Let's have it like mimic the arm above it, I think. Yeah, there we go. Good. Nice little second baby arm. Nothing says creepy like a baby arm. Boop. The fun of doing this in real time. There we go. Okay, cool. The other thing we want to focus on is this hand over here. I added the lower part. So I pulled out this claw piece out of the same cast thing. I added a little thumb for it um, because I thought it looked cooler with a thumb. Um, so that's just like one of the claws from the uh, gauntlet on the giants. And I think that'll fit nicely right in there. The question is just what angle do I want it at? That's too, yeah, that's too, too up. It's definitely that angle. Okay. So then yet again, we get our goo going. Let's goo it up. We're going to goo both sides of this since there's, since I don't know exactly. Some of the, sometimes you got to over goo when you're doing these big kit bashes, because you don't know exactly where the parts are gonna actually connect, since they're not sort of made to go together. There we go, that'll sit right in there. We're gonna actually set him down so it can rest on the ground. Take some extra bits that are on my table here. We'll just slide those under. There we go. Nice little breach to keep that in place. And there we go. We just let those dry. So, uh, all that's dry. There it is. Got our little arm in place. I'll put the second arm on in a minute, but we're going to deal with this weapon situation. Went and dug around, found this super cool axe head uh, for my bits. I think this is from a creature caster guy, um, but that's fine. It's good. It's a good giant axe. I like it. The problem is I don't have any thing else for it. So I found uh, some of this, which is, this is a tube of plastic card you can buy. So this is just the Gale Force 9 uh, plastic accessory variety pack. You can see it has a bunch of different little tubes and I-beams and stuff like that. So I picked the size that happens to fit the axe head nicely right there. Good stuff. I suppose if I didn't have this, you could just use like a straw. That'd probably work. Um, but the problem is it's blank and it doesn't look like anything interesting. So what we have here is some jeweler chain. Um, you can go buy this. You know, this is just jewelry chain. It's super cheap and you can get it at basically any, uh, any sort of craft store or anything like that. Uh, and what we're going to do now is... There we go. We're going to go ahead and make a, a loop of chain here for this. We're going to just take a little glue, put it along there, and a little line along there. We don't need much of this to make this stick. There we go. That should do. And then we're just going to wrap this around, making sure we get nice even application of the thing. Doesn't need to be perfect because it is a big giant's weapon and he's kind of a dummy and a monster. So, you know, whatever.
then we're just going to go ahead and attach the top of this. Now this is resin, so we're not going to use sprue goo for it. We'll use just this traditional gel glue here. And yet again, we go to our accelerant. One, two, three, we have an axe. Let's see how that looks. I might want to do a little more chain of above, actually. Hmm. How's that feel? Too much. Feels too popped up. Like it's up too high. He should be gripping it up here. Maybe like right under the, the thing. All right, well, I'm gonna put a little more chain on, then we'll reattach and we'll get the arm there. So there we go. Time to attach him up to his legs. Actually make him stand here. Uh, so then I can put the axe in place and we'll see how that goes. So happily these guys fit together very nicely. Uh, generally. Yep. And there you go. Assembled that, no issue. Nailed it. Alright, so with him all together we're going to take a little bit of this. And you know, one of the things with using sprue goo, as you may have noticed throughout this, that I'll apply the sprue goo and then I will come back in and use the just the regular super glue thin to like smooth it down, re-soften it up. Just make sure it's very liquidy and that it settles properly. It's just a good additional trick. Now, when you're doing it, make sure it's not a part that's actively holding something because it will reactivate all of it and suddenly go loose again. So you gotta be very careful about that. But in this case, he's nice and solid on there. <laughs> So no concerns. There go. Give a little pressure. Nice. Okay. So I like the way that's looking. Yeah, all together. He's looking nice and shambly. Shamblematic. Look at this dude. So now it's time to give him his axe. And we just need to figure out what position that's gonna sit in now that he's all assembled. Uh fortunately it just snaps into his hand. I'm thinking we want to rotate it up just slightly. Like the natural position would probably be here. That would be the correct way he'd hold this. But that's a really ugly position for it to sit in for the viewing angle. So we're probably going to sit it like this. Just because that will make it look better. So, you know, such is life. Sometimes we, we make sacrifices of the, the logical for the art. He's, he's coming right along. Our four-armed uh, king here. He's uh, certainly a horrible, horrible monstrosity, which is what we wanted. So, rawr. All right, so more or less final update. I think he's good to go. We got everything green stuffed up there, all the gaps filled. I'll kind of sand that once it's hard. But uh, yeah, I think he's appropriately monstrous. Uh, we got chains, we got tubes. You can see we added some more tubes here on his belly, on his leg. You know, we went ahead and actually put little green stuff snakes here, which I'll flatten out and sand down uh, on his weapon just to kind of separate the two elements uh, a little more, just create something that'll be easier to like have a distinction when I paint it there. Um, I got this little portal thing on his belly, which, you know, who knows what it does, but that's fine. I got a little spiky armor on his arm on both cases. Yeah, I mean, I like how he came out. I like his sort of movement. Um, he's very sort of contrapposto with the, the leg forward and then everything else sweeping in that direction. Um, the face is suitably horrible. His back is a little open. Normally I put a little more tubes and stuff like that on the back, but I thought on this guy I'd leave it a little more uh, unblemished. Maybe we'll do just some, some scarification or something back there with paint. But uh, overall, pretty good, uh, pretty good little project. 
Uh, obviously, this took a lot of kits. You know, there's the multiple different uh, Chaos and Imperial Knights. There's the little Chaos monster guy whose name I don't remember for these pieces and all sorts of things. But it's a lot of fun. Whether you have access to all these kinds of kits or not, and you want to chop up, you know, $100 box sets to just make a fun model, it you don't need to do all that. Just doing conversions like this and playing around and making, especially an army like this, where they are very monopose and sort of one always looks like every other one you ever see, I think is highly rewarding. Even if it's just doing things like messing with the weapon, you know, as you can see, it's not that hard to make your own new weapon shaft. So if you cut the head off like a corn axe or something and put it on there, great, you can do that too. Um, you know, but just messing around with the different pieces and parts, doing and, and repurposing things like the horns from the chariot became his horns on his helmet, right? A lot of these little pieces like these, the bolts in his neck, those were some kind of antenna off an Eldar thing. Like they don't have to be the thing that you use them as. Uh, you can always feel free to experiment. Just stare at your bits for a little while and see what grabs you. So there you go. That's King Broad all ready to go. He's ready for paint now. Uh, I will see when I actually can get paint on him, but what a fun conversion he was to do. Uh, this guy is absolutely massive, and I am definitely very excited uh, about having him on the table. So uh, super fun. Thank you so much for watching this. If you liked this, give it a like. If you've got questions, Hey, drop those down below. I always answer every question. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're on the push to 100,000. Can we get there? I don't know. Probably not. But we're going to try. So let's see if we can make it happen. Also, don't forget, if you want to support the channel, you can do so uh, through the Patreon link below. Uh, that Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, thank you so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. As always... We'll see you next time.